Great jumping Jehoshaphat. Have you seen what's going on up at the Tennessee legislature? This could be, this could be like one of the fastest moving, most important newscasts of the year. I'm Brandon Lewis with the Tennessee Conservative News. I'm going to kindly ask you to forward this podcast email wherever you find it on Twitter, Facebook, uh, on the podcast platforms, iTunes, Spotify. Share this thing out because people don't know this stuff is going on. It is Brandon Lewis here with the TenCon Big 7 Weekend Update, and we have got news on censorship that will make you go like, what in the world are they doing and thinking? We have got stories about giving illegal aliens taxpayer-funded college. We have got stories about uh, banning drag queen shows, um, more promotion of foreign labor. This just perplexes me. Uh, we're going to talk about some things becoming law that, that could have become law a long time ago to uh, protect kids uh, and all the sex change mania uh, and also uh, stopping the transportation of illegals in addition to maybe putting a wrinkle in the Tennessee Titans stadium plan but for all the wrong reasons. Boy, oh boy. These are stories that you will not get anywhere else because we have tried We have tried to get other news outlets to cover this, thinking that they would consider it to be important. But alas, they do not. So, we're going to get right into it here. We're going to get right into it. Uh, do go and follow us on Twitter. Uh, just type in Tennessee Conservative. We are having an impact on Twitter. And go to the other places, the free speech platforms, uh, Gab, Getter, Truth, Parlor, Rumble, and MeWe, and share this into the conservative groups because nobody is hearing the truth out there. All right, I'm going to get right into it. Here we go. This is the first story. We have been, I've been working on this. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, I run another company. I work a job. I don't make nothing doing this. Like Jack Squad, I've put a bunch of money in. I don't take any out. I do this out of a sense of mission. And so it aggravates me when I am in the middle of conducting something that makes me a lot of money to have to stop what I'm doing over here and to like go after folks for doing stuff that's just ridiculous. And this is, I've seen no better example, Briggs and Whitson, two people that need a primary opponent uh, more than probably almost anybody else in the legislature. Let me read this junk to you. Representative Sam Whitson and Senator Richard Briggs want to silence and censor conservative grassroots publications groups, individuals, and even small businesses in Tennessee with new legislation. I'll tell you what all this is about. All this is about Moms for Liberty, Tennessee Stands, the Tennessee Conservative, and other organizations that for the first time ever have actually been paying attention to a very simple fact, and that is Republicans say they are conservative, yet they vote like Democrats, doing the bidding of left-leaning corporations up in Nashville. And the truth has legs, and when people hear it, and when the evidence mounts, it hurts them politically, and they do not like it. That's what all this is about. Because the Democrat groups don't attack these rhinos because they vote like Democrats anyway. They leave them alone. They're glad they're up there. Their district is drawn Republican, but they get votes out of them just like they were Democrats. They love them. Where do they get their flack? From conservative groups. The majority leader almost got beaten by Gary Humble. It embarrassed the hell out of them because Jack's got a, a weak voting record. He's not the worst. He's not the best. Weak. And over two and a half years when he should have been standing up, he was behind Bill Lee's pant leg when our medical freedoms and everything else was being turned upside down. How will they do it? How will they do this? This is how the bill was written. Any person, organization, or company who speaks out about a measure or a candidate or gives money or receives over $2,000 a year will be subject to being defined as a political action committee. It could be you personally, I kid you not, your church, your business, your grassroots organization. Then the Tennessee uh, Finance Board will come after you in an arbitrary way, just like they did Tennessee Stands, without any sort of complaint being filed. A bunch of good old boys sitting in a room saying, well, it looks like there might be something here. That is not justice. That is not how our system of government works. The police can't just come to your house and say, well, looks like something's going on here. Well, do you have any evidence? Do you have a warrant? Do you have any suspicion? Did anybody file a complaint? No, we just, you're a political enemy. We have it going on right now here in the state of the Tennessee. And if the Tennessee Election Finance Board wants to maintain their integrity and their reputation, they can't do stuff like this, even if their powerful friends are asking them to. You've seen what happens when the FBI and other institutions pull this nonsense. People completely lose trust in them. But I guess you can be so blinded by power you'll go off on these goose chases. 
Constituents have emailed Whitson expressing opposition to the legislation, stating that the bill is an insidious attack on the freedom of the press, but more importantly, an attack on our alternative way for major news sources, which have a proven bias. Having opportunity to flatly deny these allegations, Whitson instead replied to the constituents with a form letter that addressed zero of their concerns, which is what they typically do. And I have reached out to constituents in Whitson's district, and almost to a person, all of them says it's about as good as you can expect from him. Well, what a reputation. This week, instead of withdrawing the bill from consideration, he said he would most likely roll it to next week to apparently allow time to make amendments. Prior to any potential amendments being made to address the concerns of constituents, Representative Curtis Johnson signed on as a co-sponsor. Curtis Johnson, if he's in your district, I think he's up, I mean, good grief, up there in Clarksville, I believe. Of HB 183, and Senator Brent Taylor signed on to a prime co-sponsor of SB 160 in the Senate. The Senate version will be heard in the Senate uh, State Local Government Committee on February. You can find the contact information below this in the show notes, wherever you get this show. Again, forward this around. Now listen, here's what happens. This is so funny. And I just love it when people think that I'm stupid, and they think that you're stupid. It just it baffles me. So here, here are the excuses that we have heard, and, I, and this is going to go on in a few bills that are going on in the legislature. Here's the first excuse. Some government lobbyist handed me this thing, and it is my duty to carry it. A government lobbyist does not elect you to your position. If a government lobbyist gives you something that you don't think is the right thing to do, you need to tell the government lobbyist, no, find some other schmo, unless you are the schmo. The second thing that they say is, oh, oh, now this, this bill, as is, 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 is terrible as it is, and I'll tell you how terrible it is, is just a draft. So let me back up and explain to you what this bill says. This bill is so terribly written, and you can go back to the coverage of it in the Tennessee Conservative. You can look at the actual bill language. And it's like, if you give or receive $2,000, if you mention the name of a candidate, if it's the same kind of crap before, except now they're trying to cast a broader net with it, if you uh, advocate for using your free you know, First Amendment rights, an, a measure or an issue or against it, it's also very vague that any company, any news outlet, any nonprofit who just tells the truth about a candidate's voting record, and these two have terrible voting records, that all of a sudden you're subject to, to being defined as a political action committee, even if that's not what your organization does, even if it's not the primary things it does, even if you don't spend money directly on elections. And it is there, they are looking for a way to use the Tennessee election uh, board, Tennessee Election Finance Board, as a club to wield at their political enemies. These two guys are no different than Joe Biden and the Democrats who try to weaponize other government agencies to shut people up. That's exactly what we got going on here. They look up at the Democrat playbook in Washington, they're like, it'd be good for Nashville. So when somebody gives you a bill and you go, oh, this bill is terrible as it is, it's terrible as it is, but I'm running it anyway, I get got given to me. If somebody gives you a terrible bill, why would you put your name on it unless that's what you actually want it to do? Here's what I have found. If you've tuned out, tune back in. When people run a bill initially, that bill is typically in the form that they hope to see go forward. They don't start out where they don't want to be. They start out where they want to be. And then it gets curtailed down to something that everybody else agrees with. So when somebody brings a bill that is this far-reaching and it basically uh, gives them the opportunity to at any time they want to, whenever they get aggravated enough to call over to the election finance committee and say, hey, buddy, we got somebody running their mouth and we don't like it, could you go after them? Could you put them into a thing where they got to hire attorneys and lawyers and we can run this investigation on them? That's what we really want to do. we got to shut somebody up over here. That's th that is this type of bill and these two are the type of men that want to run it. And these other people that have signed on with it? Here's what I've discovered. In the two and a half years I've been doing this, and we've got some good news later in this podcast where we have done some things that have been very effective 
And we already have everybody on the committee saying that this, this bill is dead, yet it's still on the state website, it's still on the calendar, it still has sponsors. It's like the committee members don't even know what's going on in the Senate if the thing's alive or dead. And they keep telling their constituents it's dead, but it is very clearly not dead on the website. They're all very confused about if this thing is still going on or not. They're, they're saying one thing, but the, the, but the, uh, the actual formal declarations that are clearly seen for public view are saying something else. And they are so used to having super-duper low-information voters, which is what they love and what they're trying to continue on with, that they can blow smoke and then the public doesn't know. Well, that's where we come in. So what I have learned is it does not matter with some of these folks— Whitson, Briggs, they don't give a rip about their constituents, their desires, their needs. They look down on people. They think everybody's a lummox. They're up there. It's their show. So this summer, I'm going to put together, and I've talked about this, a conservative candidates academy. I used to run campaigns for a living. I didn't want to do it. I just wanted to run my little news publication. But now I've discovered that if we don't do something uh, to get these people out of office and to train up conservatives to actually win elections— not in the ways that some people do it, but to give them ongoing coaching, mentors, vendors, and strategies in a way that is affordable because everybody's stuck in this weird situation where they, they're too big to not have any help, but they're too small to get a, a true paid consultant. We're going to split the difference, just like what I do with my Painters Academy. So if you're interested in running for office, in particular in the state legislature, and I'm only going to work with one person in one race, you need to email Brandon at TennesseeConservativeNews.com. Brandon at TennesseeConservativeNews.com. I am putting together, I'm putting together a list of folks. I've already got an Excel sheet of people that have reached out to me just from casual mentions. Well, I'm laying it out there now. It doesn't matter how much we report if we've got people up there in elected office who will never, ever do the will of the people. And that is almost all of leadership. They will do the bidding of the corporate overlords. But they will not do the bidding of the electorate on things that have been brought up for decade after decade. Let's move on. <laughs> Just when you think, oh, Todd Gardenhire couldn't do anything any worse. Mm -hmm. he, he never disappoints. Never disappoints. He missed his calling. He needs to go move into one of these Democrat districts and kick out somebody that's a Democrat there in a Senate district. He would represent them so much better. Garden Hire joins with the Democrats to give illegal aliens taxpayer-funded college perks. <laughs> Senator Todd Garden Hire is sponsoring a bill that would give illegal aliens free college tuition in exchange for teaching in Tennessee public schools for at least five years. Well, they couldn't mess up the schools. Probably. Senate Bill 297 says that if anyone is not eligible for in-state tuition which would include out-of-state residents and, I guess, people that they just pulled out of a, a, you know, a tractor trailer coming across the border illegally, which would include uh, residents and students uh, noted in the bill, quote, without lawful immigration status, that's another way of saying illegal immigrants, could get in-state tuition rates if they enroll in a teacher prep program. The difference between the in-state tuition rate and the out-of-state tuition rate would be covered by money from the Tennessee Assistance Corporation in the form of a loan, not that you'd ever end up having to pay it off or anything. Then if a student signs the loan agreement to teach in a public school for at least five, five years, I guess that's punishment enough. Their student loan will be forgiven. Garden Hires teamed up with Democrat Yusuf Hakim to be the co-sponsor in the House with HB 1294. Garden Hire um, also has a uh, backup caption bill with Mark White that might be used as a backup if this uh, bill should fail to pass. I can think of nobody better for Todd Gardenhire to partner with on giving illegal immigrants uh, taxpayer-funded education than Mark White. Now, he won't give educational opportunities to kids in Tennessee, Mark White won't. No school choice for, for the native-born kids of Tennessee who are in these failing schools when only a third of them can read and write, only a, a less than a third of them can do their math at grade level for their behind in every single solitary academic measurement. Now, Mark White, he ain't for that. But illegal aliens getting some free school choice options? Pfft, sign me up. Next story. Guys, if you want to reach the most politically engaged conservatives in the volunteer state, you want to reach them. Or if you just want to help me and hope to God that your phone rings because <laughs> you believe in the mission. We've gotten some people that have done that. 
they're far and few between. Because uh, conservatives, yeah, we say, I always tell people, and you can write this down, if you're afraid to stand up for your convictions and your morals and your core values because you are afraid you might lose a dollar or you're afraid of what other people think, then your core values are money and what other people think because your actions speak louder than words. Your actions, really, that's what you live out. So if you want to reach these folks, do email news at tennesseeconservativenews.com news at tennesseeconservativenews.com or you can email me brandon at tennesseeconservativenews.com and we will put something together that actually works for you and if i don't think it will work for you i will tell you i will tell you and you may say brandon i don't care if it works or not i just want to do it i want to advertise with you it is a tax write-off and it's a marketing expense and i want to support your publication and i just i hope that the phone will ring uh, and for some folks, uh, we've got a few sponsors that we're perfectly aligned with, and we do a fantastic job for them because we're, we're hitting the target that they want to be in front of, and we appreciate the support. So if you can help us, if you're a small business owner and you'd like to advertise with us, we could use the help. All right, next story. Bill to ban drag shows for minors. That those aren't the people in in that are getting coal and tin out of the ground. These are miners. M I N O R S uh, passes first huddle in Nashville. A bill to address the rash of quote unquote family friendly drag shows where children have been exposed to inappropriate entertainment passes the first hurdle in Nashville this week. And boy, you should see the Democrats crowing about this. I never thought. 10, 15, 20 years ago, you would have adults being angry about the fact that men dressed as women in scantily clad outfits could not perform for children. That that would be a mainstream, left-leaning thing. I continue to be surprised as an American, educated in the old-school tradition of the founders in our Constitution, that we have to do any of this on the Republican side. I'm equally confounded by the fact that our Republicans don't have those same moorings to get out in front of this stuff early. Senate Bill 3, sponsored by Senate Majority Leader Jack Johnson, creates an offense for a person who engages in an adult cabaret performance on public property, or in a location where the adult cabaret performance should be viewed by a person that is not an adult. Thank you, Majority Leader Jack Johnson. I appreciate you doing this. The Companion Bill 9 is sponsored by Representative Chris Todd, who is a true blue conservative. Truly. He is a good person. Somebody you can support and count on. The Senate version made it out of committee, passing 7-1 to with Republican Senators Garden, Heyer, Lundberg, Rose, Stevens, Taylor, White, all voting A for the bill to move forward. Democrat London Lamar voting no. The House version is passed out of subcommittee with a voice vote of A's prevailing. Democrat Gloria Johnson requested to be recorded as voting no. Senate 3, uh, Bill 3 will be seen, uh, heard on the Senate floor February 6th. Uh, House Bill 9 will be heard in the full House committee February 7th. So if you go to the article, if you look, if you just type in drag shows and you see this picture on the Tennessee Conservative News, it's a little search icon up in the right-hand corner, you will see a list of all the people you need to contact. Thank you guys for standing up and putting an end to this junk. I mean, think about this, guys. It, it was well planned. Organ, very organized, focused effort compressed into a period of time where all of these shows crop up all over America and in Tennessee to begin the process of normalizing grooming children for a lifestyle that is not biblical or helpful. And if you look at all the studies, it does not make people happy because they're not living out the instruction manual. You can do, you can do whatever you want to in life, but when you, get off, when you get off of the rails of how things are supposed to be and the natural order of things, when we, when we quit acting as God designed us, it never turns out well. Representative Carr withdraws bill that prioritize foreign labor over native Tennessee workers. This is one of those hallelujah moments. 
To my knowledge, the Tennessee Conservative is the only publication or organization that made any stink about this. And I think it is only because of you, our subscribers, that this thing is dead. We got the ugliest note from whoever the press person is for the House GOP defending this stuff. And that goes to show you, that goes to show you where the heart of Republican leadership is, where when we go after something like this that we know Republican primary voters don't like, and we get chastised by the press person for the House caucus, you know that they are a corporate party. You know, the, the, the Tennessee Holler and the Tennessee Lookout does some pretty good reporting. They are very left-leaning. Uh, but I appreciate much of what they do, and they are against a lot of this stuff just like I am. I mean, they're, they're against corporate welfare, which I can't believe that we agree on that for the most part. They come at it from a different angle. But they are always beating up on Republicans, and I have to find myself doing it most of the time too because they're not conservative, but um, they don't trust them. They're very cynical over there. Well, I don't trust them, and I'm very cynical over here. And it used to be what the press's job was, was to be cynical of government. And we've lost that. We've become a state-run media, an echo chamber. And it's because the corporations control the government. The corporations control the media outlets. And so the governments and the media outlets say the same thing, but not here at the Tennessee Conservative. And because of you, because you are the Republican primary voters, and because you are in alignment with us philosophically, we can reach out and, and let these folks know that, hey, I mean, you can put another black eye on your record. That's fine. It's just going to make you that much vulnerable the next time you want to run for office. And that's not uh, any kind of threat. That's just like it, if, you, if you sign up to do a job and your job performance is poor, the chance of, of somebody keeping you on as an employee is very low. And these people are employees of the people. Representative Dale Carr has withdrawn a piece of legislation that would have made Tennessee more appealing to illegal immigrants by making it easier for employers to replace Tennessee workers with foreign labor. Tennessee House Bill 4 would have allowed state and local government entities to forego verification of a non-resident alien status so long as the non-resident alien either holds a J-1 visa or a valid H-2B visa or holds a valid visa for participation in an in international culinary in internship program. This would have defeated the point of established verification measures, which we have hardly any to begin with, like the systematic alien verification for entitlements program, like we need to be giving people from other countries entitlements in Tennessee. Or the student and exchange visitor information system. Carr also withdrew another similar bill, House Bill 260, from consideration on the same date. Both bills were sponsored by Senator Frank nicely in the Senate. I don't understand this. I, I, I think Frank's got a very solid... Uh, voting record on things. I was like remarkably surprised to see his name on this. I was just shocked. There are some Republicans that think if you make it legal, Republican primary voters will be happy with it. Like, as long as it's legal. Well, just because it's legal doesn't mean it's helpful. We've got a cultural problem. We've got an education problem. We've got a crime problem in Tennessee. We've got a drug problem in Tennessee. A lot of it has to do with the fact that we do nothing substantive to prevent illegal immigration in the state. We do nothing. We just point it at the at what they love to do, what the rhinos love to do, is just to point at the border and to point at Washington so we don't hold them accountable to do anything at the state level about the problems. And, and I understand that corporations want cheap labor. I get it. I understand that corporations want more customers to sell things to. I get it. I still don't think it's good for the culture and the fabric of Tennessee. I don't. I believe that immigration is a policy that can be discussed uh, logically and rationally without throwing around um, insults and racism just like any other issue can. I'm just a policy person. Is the policy good? Yes or no? This is not a good policy. Had the bill passed, Tennesseans would likely have seen a rise in cheap foreign labor in which would negatively impact opportunities and wages for available U.S. citizens, and it crams a bunch of kids into schools, especially in urban centers, where they can't educate the kids they already got. Adding more kids. <laughs> if, you were, if you were sucking, you got, you got 10 chickens. You can't keep up with them. 10 chickens. Can't keep up with them. Can't feed them. Can't clothe them. Can't get the eggs. The eggs are rotten. The, the foxes are eating them. Can't keep up with 10 chickens. Too much. Too much for you. Anything that puts an extra chicken in the coop 
is not a good policy. Can't manage what you have. Don't need more issues to manage, especially if these chickens are different from the other chickens, and these chickens maybe even speak a different language, come from a different culture. You, you can't even help the kids that speak the language you're trying to teach them. It's not a good idea. We, we've got to put our kids and our workers in Tennessee first. We have to. It's common sense. Take care of your own household before you take care of somebody else's. Additionally, this bill seemed to prioritize helping businesses import temporary foreign labor over uh, and above the livelihoods of Tennessee. We do not currently know why Carr chose to pull the bills for consideration, but feedback from our previous articles alerting readers about the legislation suggests that conservatives in Tennessee were very much opposed to it. So here's the thing about illegal immigration. Now, we're actually going to talk about a good one before we, we get out of here. What's the next story? Well, before I beg... Every year, you think something will be done about illegal immigration. We're in the middle of, of the biggest crisis we've ever seen in Tennessee from an illegal immigration standpoint. It kills me how our government could mobilize and turn life upside down for a virus with a 99.9% survival rate and to shove things like vaccination down our throat that, that later turned out to be a lie as far as stopping transmission we don't even know how helpful it is versus how harmful it is and it's we know that there are side effects we were never told about we were told you know let's face it masks work i mean this was like, like a state government campaign so why in the world can the can the government mobilize so quickly to do something that takes away our constitutional rights and our freedoms and shuts businesses down like they can do that on a dime in in a way that it was really just like a mass psychosis that made no sense and people like me in March, like I was standing up on a bridge saying this is nonsense, so people can't ever accuse me of being an armchair quarterback. I saw this crap coming, and I stuck with it from day one because I'm not an idiot, and I'm not the kind of person who gets influenced by peer pressure. I never have been. I just, it doesn't matter. If everybody else, you call me names, you can laugh about me behind my back. I don't care what you do. It makes no difference to me. I'm going to keep moving in a certain direction, and eventually the world will come behind me. It will. Because I, I mean, I was I was raised by old people that were wise, and I have their I have their sensibilities. It came down in the gene pool, and I figured this stuff out. And so every session, every session, instead of having measures put forth that would reduce illegal immigration, we have measures snuck in that would increase it, and we never address the issues that bring it in. And when we do try to address the issues that would stop it or curtail it. Those things are opposed. That tells you everything you need to know about Cameron Sexton, Randy McNally, Bill Lee, and the top of the Republican leadership. Their actions are terrible. There's not a Republican in Republican leadership that should be able to utter the word illegal immigration except to perhaps say, I'm mainly for it. Guys, these stories don't write themselves. They don't. If you really care about conservatism, you will give. If you do not, you will create an excuse. You can have the results of a free and well-informed citizenry in Tennessee where you get to keep your freedoms because there's no place left to run, or you can have your excuses. But you can't have both. So if you'd like the freedom over the excuses, please do go to tennesseeconservativenews.com slash support. Leave your guilty conscience and give. If you give any amount... <laughs> If you give any amount, we will send you this Don't California My Tennessee bumper sticker, this Proud Tennessee Conservative uh, bumper sticker, and this new fangled, dangled, fantastic, wonderful, updated directory of all your legislative critters so that you can reach out to them when they try to, I don't know, import more illegal aliens, censor speech, you know, all the things they're busy up there doing that are really for your benefit and not theirs or the corporate overlords that fund them. And if you give $50 or more, or if you give a $10 donation or more that is recurring, a monthly recurring donation, we will give you this Proud Tennessee Conservative Koozie. And we will also give you this Proud Tennessee Conservative Tumblr, which you're going to have to imagine, because it appears that in the cleaning of the office, which happened here recently, that that has been misplaced. So, I want you to just close your eyes, not if you're driving. If you're driving, don't close your eyes. Keep them open. And imagine... Imagine a, a gleaming cylindrical tube, almost like, almost like, uh, 
what was in Indiana Jones when he was reaching out and he was trying to find that very that very wonderful beautiful chalice and and he had to pass the test with the old knight that is basically what this is um, and it, it it will give you immortal life uh, it's very amazing uh, and it also keeps beverages warm and and cold which is which is really good and helpful so you will get that tumbler and we will send it directly to you uh, oh the mailbag well, I forgot the mailbag here's one now I, I will admit freely that some of the mailbag is back at at Lewis Manor uh, I I left we got it just, we had it's been a good last week was hectic I, I did the seventh annual painting profit summit had about a hundred business owners in town for three days and I was on from eight o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock at night and sometimes later and sometimes six o'clock in the morning doing a workout class all the way to ten o'clock at night and I was just pooped tired and uh, so some of the mailbag got left to the house which I'm gonna drag back up here to the office but let's just read one of them shall we Thank you for all you do to help keep our state informed and the shenanigans going on in Nashville. Uh, some of the same stuff is going on here in Chattanooga. <laughs> you better know it. Uh, we have several good conservative groups here. Please uh, try and keep them from going down rabbit holes. Credibility is very important, and they must keep focused on the facts. Take care, and thank you, Nancy. Well, thank you, Nancy. I appreciate you sending me that note, and I do take fan mail. Fan mail. <laughs> the Tennessee Conservative, uh, 1523 East 27th Street, uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37404. I'll give it to you again. The Tennessee Conservative, 1523 East 27th Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37404. Or go to tennesseeconservativenews.com slash support. Thank you. Uh, here's another one. Here we go. Let's just keep on moving. Let's keep moving. Oh, my gosh. We got another one. Is this right? Here we go. Bill to protect sex change, to prohibit rather, sex change procedures treatments on minors one step closer to becoming Tennessee law. This week, legislation that would effectively make it illegal for any medical treatments that would permanently change the physical bodies of underage persons who are experiencing gender dysphoria. Sometimes I think that it's like they are experiencing watching too much TV, being on social media, having crazy parents, and being in crazy government schools. That's what the cause of a lot of this stuff is. It is the it is the dark malignant uh, work of satanic forces trying to get at what is a man, what is a woman, how was the earth created, it, attacking the very bedrocks of of what we know to be true in the Bible and Genesis. They are just trying to destroy the foundations so that everything else will crumble. It is sad. Either through surgery or hormone treatments, move one step closer to becoming law. In the state of Tennessee, House Bill 1, sponsored by Representative William Lambert, passed out of the House Health Subcommittee by a voice with A's prevailing Democrat Bo Mitchell requested uh, to be recorded as voting no because he thinks that kids should be chopped up, I suppose. Terrible the times we live in. Senate Bill 1, sponsored by Jack Johnson, passed out of the Senate Health and Welfare Committee with, with Senators Crow, Hale, Hensley, uh, Jackson, Massey, Reeves, Swan, uh, voting in the affirmative, and Democrat Senator Yarbrough, the long no. House Bill 1 will next be heard by the full House Health Committee on February 8th, and Senate Bill 1 will be heard by the Judiciary Committee on February 7th. You can find the contact information for all the committee members on our website. Now, sometimes you may ask yourself, when stuff like this is going on, why don't I push the heck out of it? It's not because I don't care. I, I get an idea, in a sense, almost based upon who's carrying the bills and how, how much press they try to get for it and how much they try to break their arms, patting themselves on the back for it, when, in fact, they are running the bill that Janice Bowling put out. And they, she, she was crazy, right? She was crazy for having done it. And instead of saying, Janice, I'm sorry you were right. We should have got out in front of this. They waited until Matt Walsh made them look bad, and then they kick the real conservatives out of the line lot. They send the, the, the less conservative people up that are in leadership to, to take all the applause, and then they pass it. That's politics, baby. That is politics. So when I know that something's going to push and go through, like, I don't worry about it very much, and I don't nag y'all about it. But when something is bad or something is good that I think will probably be killed because the rhinos won't let it through, that's when I let you know. I've got a very specific strategy that I work on this stuff, okay? And it is occasionally moderately effective. It will become more effective as time progresses, but for now, 
we do what we can with your help, and without your help, we could do nothing. So thank you. See, you can see why I'm so confused. You can see. We'll get into it. Why I'm so confused. Powers and nicely introduced legislation to curb transportation and harboring of illegal aliens in Tennessee. State Representative Dennis Powers has filed House Bill 1246 and House Bill 1247. I will be interviewing uh, Dennis, who is just a fantastic representative. Takes so much courage and positivity and uh, perseverance to be conservative up in Nashville. It takes none to be a rhino. Boy, you will just be slapped on the back left and right. You'll get money. You'll get committee appointments if you're a rhino. If you're a true conservative up there, I mean, you're in the minority. You're in the minority, and we appreciate people that stand up when it puts them in the minority. HB 1246 states, as introduced, removes exemptions from prosecution of the offense of transportation Transporting illegal aliens for common carriers and those transporting individuals for religious purposes. Powers filed a similar bill during the last legislative session uh, following his testimony in the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, with Senators Todd Gardenhire, John Stevens, and Senator Mike Bell voting against it. The reason we can't get reform about illegal aliens and illegal immigration in our state is because of Republicans. It is not Democrats. We have no support from leadership from McNally or Sexton to stop this issue or to help it make any progress. That is the truth. And that's why it is so important that you share this like, that, so people understand and know what's really going on in their government. Instead of watching the D.C. circus that they can't do anything about, meanwhile, right here, an email, a phone call, a visit to the Capitol, a little bit of money goes a long way. A little bit of money in D.C. goes damn near nowhere. The companion bills, uh, 1150 and, Sen- and Senate Bill 1151, are sponsored by Frank Nicely. Nicely stated in an interview with the Tennessee Conservative, uh, now it is known that illegal immigrants are being bussed through and dropped off at various points throughout the state. Maybe this legislature will pay attention to these bills this time around. I'm doubtful. So I'm going to start encouraging people to support this. i got to get out in front of this. And this is one of those things, I look at this and I'm like, oh, crap, I should have been working on this too. It's like I need to support the good stuff, but we got to fight the bad stuff. They just keep me busy all the time. And I don't do this for a living. If I did it for a living, I could eat, sleep, drink it, and I could tell you about it all the time. But as such, you just have to take what you get. So this is what is confusing to me. Like, I could not believe that Nicely had his name on that other bill. To, to, to weaken... The standards by which we bring in foreign labor into Tennessee. I mean, just because you call it, just because it becomes legal, does not mean it's good or helpful. I think the ultimate solution to a lot of this is to be a lot more stringent in Tennessee about who can and who can't get on welfare and disability. Feeding yourself is a fantastic motivator for working. It is. We've got an entire class of people that that have just quit looking for work because they just live on the dole. And we could fill every one of those jobs, in many cases, with able-bodied, perfectly capable folks if they would just go work. I think that's what we need to do. We need to get back to work because with work comes dignity and self-respect. The government cannot mail that to you in a mailbox. Democrats will will tell you that, that the government's God and that they can provide for you all your happiness. And that if you don't have happiness, it's somebody else's fault and you just keep hanging on with the government long enough and they'll give it to you. And it is a lie. Next story. Now, I love this story. And this is could not be any more perfectly illustrative of how out of touch with voters Republican leadership is. And it's so funny. I'm going to read it to you. Bill to cut uh, Nashville City Center funding calls into question tax plan for new $2.2 billion Titan Stadium. The proposed new bill... And the Tennessee legislature not only proposes cutting some of the state tax funding to pay the debt on the Music City Center, but also calls into the question plans to build a new $2.2 billion stadium. Senate Bill 648, filed Thursday by Jack Johnson on behalf of Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally, would change the way taxes flow to uh, Metro Nashville to pay debt from the Music City Center, which opened in 2013. Bonds were initially issued for the Downtown Convention Center um, with a fund created to pay off the project. 
using a 3% motel tax, $2 per room occupancy tax, $2 uh, airport ground transportation tax, and a 1% vehicle rental tax. So all these little bitty taxes we're supposed to pay for this center, okay? And the surrounding areas. It's the tourism development zone, right? McNally said, now this is so funny, I'm going to read this to you and let me tell you what it's all about. Nashville has been afforded certain tools for the express purpose of encouraging convention tourism to the city. Over the last year, Metro has made it clear they are no longer interested in aggressively recruiting top-tier conventions to Nashville. They don't have any interest in it. Nashville doesn't. Back to the quote. That message has been received loud and clear by the General Assembly. If Nashville wants to prioritize political posturing over prosperity for its people, that is their prerogative, but the state does not have to participate. If Metro has no interest in properly promoting convention tourism, they have no longer required the special tax authority granted to them for that purpose. Now, what is this all about? This is about the GOP being ticked off at the Metro Council for turning down the Republican National Convention in Nashville. So let me get this straight. We give corporate welfare to millionaires and billionaires who kneel for the national anthem and who promote all kinds of things and lifestyles that Tennessee Republican primary voters do not go along with. 80% of Tennesseans, all Tennesseans, not just Republican primary voters, thought that the Tennessee Titans Stadium was bad business and that the people pushing it were doing the wrong thing. We can't stop ourselves from giving that corporate welfare money because the voters don't want it and because it's irresponsible and because it's just not right and it's immoral. We can't do it. But because we're having a political feud with Nashville over the RNC coming to Nashville, well, now we can do it but it's out of political spite, not the interest of the citizens, necessarily. That is the type of just upside-down world crap that happens up in Nashville. We can't do the right thing, but we can do the political thing. I don't care why this thing dies. I don't care if it's out of political animosity or if it's out of moral virtue. It needs to die. So I'm all for this. But I'm for it for different reasons than Jack and McNally. I'm for it because it was wrong to begin with, and I hope that they just... I mean, this is a stain on people's record. Like, when you put this on a postcard, gas tax, growing the government by 20%, voting illegal aliens, uh, professional licenses, $2.2 billion in corporate welfare for corporate millionaires and billionaires that kneel at the National Anthem... You put that on a postcard, put that on a, a voice message, you put that on a text message, you put that on social media, and you're running for office, you might outspend somebody, but if you've got to tell everybody, if you spend all your time having to defend your crappy record, this is one of those things I can't believe people ever voted for. And you know why? Even people of good conscience voted for this, because they're always afraid if they don't go along with the leadership, they don't get to be part of the club. All right, guys. That is that is the that's the gospel truth about what's going on up in Nashville. I am above the target. No one else. I'm telling you, <laughs> there ain't another podcast. There's not another news center. There's not another person who's bringing you as much news about as many topics with as much regularity as the Tennessee conservative does. And if and when one day we should cease to exist, you will be in the absolute utter darkness, grasping out there to find out what's going on with your state government. But when you tune in here, you get the high points in a short period of time, and it is well worth your time, and I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to share uh, this experience with you. I get emails, too many emails. Uh, I get text messages. I get Facebook messages. I get Twitter messages of people pouring out their support for what we do, and I appreciate it. Those words of encouragement often come uh, at the perfect time when I need it, and when our staff needs it most. So please keep them coming. Keep the pressure on your representatives up in Nashville to do the right thing. They won't reply to us when we ask them for comment, but they'll reply to you. And you forwarding their comments is very helpful. It at least lets us get some kind of BS answer out of them, even though half the time they're lying to you. And I appreciate it. It means a lot. If you have a dollar laying around, Go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com slash support. Go to Twitter, please, please. I, I think that's going to be a great tool for us. I hope it stays free speech-ish. 
for a little while longer so we can use it. I mean, we were the biggest and most influential news outlet in Tennessee on Facebook until they just looked at our content and said, we don't like it. And they've turned us like 95% down. We have true censorship in Tennessee. And it is going to hurt us in the presidential election. And I hope that the legislature does something about it this year. They didn't last year. But who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? So what's going on this weekend? All this weekend is my 12th anniversary. My 12th anniversary. I've been married to a beautiful, uh, long-suffering, sweet, wonderful mother and wife for 12 years who uh, put me on the path to the straight and narrow. I don't know that she... She, she helped me along. Helped me along. Uh, reducing the, the percentage of shenanigans that used to get me in trouble. Uh, keeping me... Uh, in, in the right direction, keep making our house a home, uh, raising our children in an impeccable and consistent way, uh, loving me, encouraging me. She's been just a fantastic woman. So we are going... Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you how old I am in, in my heart. There is this apparently supposed to be some kind of internationally known organ player playing at an Episcopal church here in Chattanooga. And I saw that, and I thought, why is something I'd like to go listen to? And I didn't realize that, you know, that, that we were going to go out Friday night for our anniversary. We are also going to go out Sunday, which is officially our anniversary. So I feel bad for dragging my wife to an organ concert for our anniversary. I mean, that's kind of lame. So I haven't bought tickets yet. <laughs> but I'm going. Oh, we may. We're, we're gonna, you can still walk in and get tickets or you can pre-book them. I just don't see that selling out. I don't see that being something that... I don't think that's what the kids are listening to these days. Uh, but I find it to be interesting. So tonight we're going to go for an early bird dinner. Uh, like I think 5.15 we've got reservations uh, at a place that my wife loves. And we're going to go there and then I'm gonna, we're going to ease on to go do something or go to an organ concert, which I think is just ridiculous. Um, and it's all my fault. Maybe. We'll see. We might, there might be something else. We were going to also try to go, I think, Saturday night. There was a band called the Squirrel Nut Zippers, and I wanted to see them, but we could not line up the babysitting for that night. Uh, and we're going to go out again on Sunday for our anniversary. So we're hitting it twice, okay? Uh, we're hitting it twice. And I just got to work. I'm covered up with work right now. You send me an email, something, I don't get back to you. It's not because I don't like you. I'm just covered up with work. I got another 30 days of it. Uh, I got to go to New Mexico and a few other places. Just super busy. So that's what's going on in our world. We just finished the last, last night. I, I was surprised my children really loved it, especially Sylvia. The Horatio Hornblower uh, miniseries, uh, which is I would recommend highly. There's nothing in it uh, that would th embarrass you to watch it with your kids. Nothing. Not a thing. There, well, eh, there, there, there's some violence. It is war. Uh, one man does take his life, but I think it proves a point. I think it's okay for kids to see that that bad things happen in war, and it, it's not. It, but it's not like violent uh, or grotesque, I should say. But there is one scene which kind of surprised me. Uh, in the books, uh, Horatio Hornblower is a very uh, troubled character. He he is uh, very brave, and he stands up for his duty. But he never thinks he measures up, and he cannot see in him uh, the positive attributes that other people see. And, uh, but he has this strange proclivity where he will take a, a shower on, on, the, on the ship uh, where they will, they'll use the pump and they'll pump seawater on him and he'll just take a shower out in front of everybody. He doesn't care. And so there is one scene which just shocked, didn't shock me, just surprised me. And he's out there and like it's just, there's no warning, there's no build up to it, there's nothing. It's like one minute he's talking to somebody and the next minute he's... His naked butt is there, and he's being sprayed down by the crew. And it shows a butt for like, I don't know, a second. So my my girl probably saw her first male butt ever, you know, aside from mine, because my kids like, like I'm in the shower, and like they don't, they just don't knock, they don't anything, they wander in, and you know, that that, that happens. You know, kids kids don't have a very uh, don't have a, a a real profound sense of privacy, or so I have discovered. So Horatio Hornblower series. It was made in the 90s. I would recommend it. You should watch it. It's very good. The books are far better, three, four times better, which is typically the case. You read a, a set of novels, um, the internal dialogue that is always written never quite comes out in a movie. 
It just can't. It's it's a different medium. Uh, it's a more in depth medium, in my opinion. I think that is why God gave us the Word, uh, and He did not give us the TV show, uh, because I think it works better in writing. All right, guys, that's what's going on this weekend. Brandon Lewis, boring organ concerts and uh, Horatio Hornblower and uh, anniversaries and things of that nature. Uh, I hope that, I hope you've got a weekend that's at least as interesting as mine. I love you, mean it. Thank you for all the support, the kind words. Uh, do spread this podcast around. Uh, give us a five-star review. Follow it. Send it to your friends who think they know what's going on in Tennessee politics that are in your conservative and Republican groups who really don't so that they can be informed. I think it would be eye-opening for them. Thank you for spreading us far and wide. This is Brandon Lewis with the Tennessee Conservative News, your friend, signing off.